Magicians used to serve as advisors to kings and great leaders, and apotropaic magic was used as a defense against evil sorcerers and for banishing the effect of evil influences, such as a curse or evil eye. With the help of good luck charms, amulets, talismans, certain gestures, etc. Today we still knock on wood to ward off bad luck. Apotropaic magic became widespread in ancient Greece. The Sumerian god Enki was associated with magic and regarded as the source of all arcane knowledge. For the ancient Mesopotamians and ancient Egyptians, magic was a way of life. They did not distinguish between rational science and magic. The Egyptians deified magic in the form of the god Heka. The main principle centered on the power of words to bring things into being. We may compare this idea with the magical word abracadabra, which appeared in late Greek writings and was used as an amulet inscription primarily to vanquish illness and is possibly related to the Gnostic god Abraxas. Though the meaning of the word is uncertain, some have translated it as I will create as I speak. This also runs parallel to the creation of the world in Genesis, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Another popular magical word of today is hocus pocus, which may derive from the words hoc es corpus in the Latin mass, this is the body of Christ. For the Egyptians, magic was present in one's birth, life, death and afterlife. In the afterlife, each individual would undergo a weighing of the heart where one's heart would be weighed on a scale against a feather. Those who had pure hearts and led a life of virtue would balance the scales and begin their long and arduous journey to Aru, or the Field of Reeds, paradise in Egyptian mythology. The deceased would face various challenges and obstacles, and magical spells were believed to provide protection and guidance. These can be found in the Egyptian Book of the Dead and are intended to assist a dead person's journey through the underworld. Magicians often have ancient terms called grimoires, or Book of Spells. The Hayat al-Hakim, translated as the Aim of the Sage, also known as the Picatrix, is a 400-page book written around the 10th or 11th century that summarizes all the works on magic and astrology and draws on hermetic and neoplatonic philosophical ideas. In biblical canon, King Solomon is a figure known for his wisdom and piety. However, in the apocryphal works he's not just associated with wisdom, but also with magic and the occult. In the Testament of Solomon, he has conversations with demons. By means of a magical ring, the seal of Solomon, he learns to control and command demons to speed up the construction of his temple. The Key of Solomon is a grimoire that describes the necessary preparations for certain magical operations. It provides instructions for the creation and consecration of magical tools, for invoking spirits, often to gain knowledge, power, or assistance in various endeavors, as well as the appropriate materials, astrological time, and magical symbols. Before the invocation, however, one must purify oneself, create a magic circle, and pray for God's protection.